Hello, welcome back to Line Rider. Welcome to the top 10 Line Rider tracks of 2022, the seventh annual installment of this series, presented by the Line Rider Artist Collective. As always, if you just want to watch the tracks and don't want to listen to us talk over them, click on the link to the playlist of tracks without commentary up above or down below. This year we had a panel of 16 judges and 11 reviewers. This video contains intense visuals such as flashing lights and graphics that may induce motion sickness, as well as heavy themes and other content warnings you might need a heads up about which are all listed in the description down below. A full breakdown of content warnings for each individual track is also in the playlist description. Alright, let's go! Number 10, Gamification by Melisma. It is incredibly fitting that the creator who made a playable version of Flappy Bird and Line Rider would then next release a music-synced WarioWare-style Line Rider video built from recreations of various video games, including many rhythm games. Over the past year, Melisma has been experimenting with color, 10-point cannons, advanced quirk, animation, and layer automation, and in gamification, Melisma synthesizes these techniques into a fun viewing experience in which each game recreation is surprising and exciting. Gamification throws the rider into different gaming challenges that they navigate and survive using precise movement. In two memorable sections, the rider plays an animated Dance Dance Revolution map using quirk lines that move them in each direction, and navigates layer automated colorful osu circles with 10 point cannons. Then, at the drop of the song, the action intensifies and each world returns in short micro challenges separated by glitchy barriers and featuring 6 iteration techniques, which make the rider look like they've been broken by a computer malfunction. Melisma also builds on the humor inherent to seeing other games in Line Rider with silly gags and in-jokes that keep the track surprising and fresh. My biggest issue with gamification is with its pacing. The track's immediately intense opening works to hook the viewer, but hurts the second half because there's less room to dial up the intensity. Regardless, gamification recognizes that Line Rider is a rhythm game, and successfully translates the feeling of playing an intense beatmap into Line Rider in a way many can appreciate. Number 9, Everywhere at the End of Time, Stage 1, by Andrew Hess. Andrew Hess has given his line rider project dementia, and this 40-minute behemoth of a track is our entry into that process. Synced to the first part of The Caretaker's six-album series of the same name, Everywhere at the End of Time, Stage 1, uses classic scenery conventions in order to explore the nature of memory and history. Andrew Hess recycles classic locales from his previous tracks, like forests, mountains, and cities, and loops them, twisting them onto themselves with subtle distortions of perspective, space, and time. From within this uncanny space, Everywhere at the End of Time Stage 1 depicts an idealized image of the 1950s which progressively alienates the viewer as each section repeats again and again with jarring hard cuts, which resemble the skip of a scratched record or an image replayed in one's mind. And in so doing, Hess's track invites us to interrogate the idealized images it presents. Memory, especially collective memory, is selective papering over the vast complexity of history for the sake of easy narratives and nostalgic pseudo-history, political topics which the caretaker's music strived to explore. Drawing from this creative wellspring, Hess manages to present to us one of the most direct and comprehensive depictions of nostalgia in a line writer track, at once beautiful and unsettling, romantic and claustrophobic. The result leaves me eagerly anticipating the further decline which awaits us in parts two through six, when the dream shatters for good and only the horror of forgetting remains. Number eight, Palaces by Ray. Over the course of 2022, Instant Flare made a remarkable shift towards subtle, even cryptic expressions of complex personal emotions. This was done through Ray, Instant Flare's alternate account for exploring and developing their creative voice. Palaces is the capstone of the Ray project's artistic transition over the past year, elaborating on thematic undercurrents of previous tracks. In it, a rider embarks on an arduous climb up the side of a mountain. The rider's halting, crawling movement viscerally conveys the struggle and perseverance of their ascent up increasingly high and treacherous slopes. Finally, the rider falls off their sled and collapses alone on the summit, staring up at the side of an even taller peak ahead of them. And then the video ends, leaving us to wonder in discomfort. Was the climb worth it? 
Was stopping here a failure, a success, or both? Mountain climbing narratives often work as metaphors for a search for meaning in life, and Palaces is powerful because it reminds us that we ultimately must make our own meaning. Measures of success within capitalism, such as career advancement or wealth accumulation, have no end. Instead, these systems always demand more sacrifices in striving for the next goal. At some point, we reach our limits, and we are forced to stop. Palaces challenges us to remember this while we still have time, and then to choose for ourselves what we'll do afterwards. At the end of a journey filled with struggle, how will you find meaning for your life? Number 7. Revisitation by Pac 2022 was a year of introspection and creative development from Pac, which is evident from what was their experimental and cryptic output. This culminated in Revisitation, which uses LimeWriter to reflect on their past artistic experiences, giving us a window into their thought processes. What's most striking about Revisitation is how candidly it presents the complex themes it grapples with, communicating Pac's thoughts directly to the audience via text, while still managing to explore its themes in an open-ended way. The emotional core of Revisitation is a question resulting from their struggles with making art after internalizing creative standards from the Geometry Dash community. How can I get my voice back if I have to meet expectations? Pac tackles this challenge through a dialogue written between different writers representing aspects of their past, present, and future. We get the sense that Pac is desperately trying to dig deep and make sense of their experiences, but no clear resolution is presented for their central conflict. Some might think that's a flaw, but I consider it a feature. The fact that Pac released Revisitation is, in itself, a form of healing worth celebrating. It is a raw snapshot of a person's healing process and artistic growth, and Pac's perspective matters more than whether the track answers its own questions. Revisitation speaks to how we are all unique people with our own unique stories and insights, messy and imperfect. I wouldn't have it any other way. Number 6. Bring Down the House by Banky Jazz is a genre of music which emphasizes improvisation. It's also a black art form prominent for its alternative approach to white European models of music theory. Engaging with jazz means engaging with its history and how your identity relates to it. And this is precisely what Banky does in Bring Down the House. Banky visualizes the spirit of jazz performance with alt quirk, an unpredictable style of movement in Line Rider, coupling Bosch's dynamic motion with written out notes and arrows depicting the mindset of a trumpet soloist. By using Quirk to highlight Jazz's freeform mode of self-expression, Bring Down the House challenges restrictive ideas around how Lime Rider creators approach technique. This track's philosophy is Jazz philosophy. Jankiness isn't a flaw that must be avoided, but rather a tool at the disposal of an artist. This prompts me to reflect on the black artist who first created Quirk, Anomaly 76, and how its influence shapes present-day Lime Rider. In my view, Bring Down the House is a recognition of jazz culture, as well as a plea for trackmakers to not only consider, but actively engage with black perspectives, increasing awareness towards how black art could or might already play a part in Lime Rider. Consequently, Bring Down the House hypes me up more than most other quirk tracks I've seen. It's fun and exciting, but even more than that, it's an invitation to look back on Lime Rider history and embrace the connections between two different art forms. Number 5, Nude, by Gavin Rue 538 As an ex-Mormon who spent much of this year working through a public crisis of faith, Gavin has made a lot of tracks that question Mormon doctrines from a variety of angles. Of these, Nude is among his gentlest and most subtle, guiding the viewer through a child's stream of consciousness, a kind of curiosity, at the new sensations that come from seeing and understanding nakedness for the first time. This track interrogates a very old belief that awareness of nudity is evidence of the first great sin humanity ever committed. Quote, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten? of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? From Genesis 3, 9 to 11, King James Version. How about you? When did you first eat of the tree? 
When did you first discover the difference between clothed and naked bodies? How did it make you feel? When it happened, and it always happens, did someone tell you how it should make you feel? Were you ever taught to hide those feelings, to replace them with shame or fear or disgust? Think these questions over while you're watching Nude, because Nude is a challenge to God, a dense, recursive trip into the deep well of religious trauma dug by generations of puritanical thought. Give him hell, Gavin. Number four, Unful Reimagined by UTD. UTD's work is well known for its use of video editing and line writer, and tracks such as 2020's Credos and 2021's Silhouette. Unful Reimagined is no exception. In Unful Reimagined, UTD takes Unfold, an unseen track by Eva Hoffman, and reimagines it with the clever use of editing in order to add a second writer to the original track. Unful Reimagined then adds additional drawings and post-production work to depict the story of a close childhood friendship that ended when UTD's friend moved away in the fifth grade. My favorite part in Unful Reimagined has to be the climax of the piece where UTD depicts an overwhelming sea of on-sale houses and edits in himself writing out his emotions on an old version of Notepad. It reaches me in the heart and gets me emotional every time I watch it. The way UTD reimagines Ava's already evocative unfold and passionately depicts his own story within it gives space for me to think about all the wonderful people that I've met and hung out with in the past but I've now unfortunately lost touch with over time. I am glad that UTD chose to speak on these difficult feelings because it makes me appreciate all the friendships I have gained in the past and gained now. I hope it makes you appreciate your friendships too. Number 3, The Name Engraved in My Heart by Ethan Lee The Name Engraved in My Heart explores the ways parents prescribe and control the identities of children through a queer Asian American lens. The track centers itself around one huge question, what is a family really? From which Ethan pours out a waterfall of culture-based memories to illustrate not just the ways they've changed as a person, but how their names have been changed, altered, and abandoned throughout their childhood. This disorientation around names, their legality, and their meaning, in the context of family and personal growth, bridges together common experiences between trans people and Chinese immigrants living in North America in ways which deeply resonate with me. In one moment, Ethan mentions they were originally renamed to Eden, but the name was edited by Ethan's father in fear of its potential femininity. Ethan drowns Bosch in language as they cascade through monolithic calligraphy practice sheets and erased family records, grappling with how different homonyms of a single letter of their Chinese name would rewrite the story of how Ethan's parents intended for them to be perceived. As a trans-Japanese person, the name engraved in my heart is the first line writer piece to ever have an intimate conversation with me about culture and race, allowing me the space to ask, how do the authorities from which we learn to communicate control and suppress how we express ourselves? And how do I connect back with my cultural heritage when the people who connect me to that culture are the ones who left my sense of identity shattered and forced me to close my heart? It's a track I wish didn't have to exist, but I am so grateful that it does. Number 2. Mount Erie by Branches Jeez, where do I even start when describing Mount Erie? In April, Jade released a 48-minute full-color album track, setting the stage for a year of introspective tracks and feature-length films. In it, we follow Bosch as she climbs and descends Mount Erie, exploring nature, death and queerness along the way. From a quiet start that gradually builds as if the universe itself is forming, to the determined climb up the final, fatal stretch of the mountain, Mount Erie leaves me with a different favorite moment every time I watch it. It never fails to be relevant to my life and what I'm going through at that time. In a political landscape where queer identity is often claimed to be unnatural, Jay delicately weaves a narrative of queer self-discovery into the very landscape we traverse. 
This is especially relevant to trans people navigating what it means to come out, like Jade, who came out as a trans woman while working on Mount Erie. Mount Erie's journey through death and what comes after connects queerness back to nature. We're shown a refreshingly hopeful perspective that asserts queerness is natural, that our lives are ever-changing, transitioning into something new. That even if we are rejected, if we die along our journey, what comes after may just be worth the pain. We live and die over and over again, in small and big ways, until it all ends. And don't even get me started on that ending, which is so breathtaking it escapes any words I could use to describe it. At its core, Mount Erie is a love letter to Lion Rider and its community. The ending credits even include little drawings of each of Jade's inspirations, as if she were giving a gift to each person who helped make her track a reality. Fittingly, Mount Erie also feels like Jade has given a gift to me personally. Every time I come back to it, I leave feeling humbled and excited, looking forward not only to the future of Line Rider, but also of my own life. And the number one Line Rider track of 2022 is... All the Things I Couldn't Say to You by Ava Hoffman. While it wouldn't be wrong to call All the Things I Couldn't Say to You a track, that doesn't really cover the breathtaking scope of what Ava has created here. All the Things I Couldn't Say to You is also a video essay, a collection of unreleased work, a tribute to a fellow line writer artist, and ultimately, a heartbreaking story of lost friendship, lack of closure, and what it means to lose someone. The history of Line Rider is chock full of unfinished projects, abandoned dreams, and lost connections, but Ava is the first to mine these depths for their narrative potential. The writing of all the things I couldn't say to you is the star of the show here, hitting each emotional beat just right through every plot twist and unexpected emotional turn without ever feeling overly sentimental or self-indulgent. Weighing in at a staggering 80 minutes, All the Things I Couldn't Say to You is the rare Line Rider video that I would genuinely describe as life-changing. It reminded me of many of my own complicated relationships with people I met on the internet, pushed me to see the profound bittersweetness of unfinished art, and forced me to reckon with my own personal relationship with death. Ava has created a work of art with a deeply affecting message about what it means to create art and to exist in relation to other human beings that leaves me filled with an indescribable mix of sadness, wonder, and gratitude. And now it's time for this year's Judge's Choice category. Each judge had the opportunity to select an additional track from the past year that they personally loved and provide an audio submission covering what they loved about it. We had some absolutely fantastic submissions this year, so without further ado, here they are. As someone who wanted to be an animator but fell out of said career prospect for various reasons, it's great to see a Line Rider track that uses post-production animation specifically for the purposes of telling a cute little story about friendship. It reminds me of friends I made for animation communities in the past, and thus what I truly valued out of the art medium to begin with. All of this is to say, Enchanted Love is incredibly well done and wholesome. Alright my traumatized transgenders at, do you wanna laugh? Do you want to cry? Do you want to get absolutely fucked up? Do you want to get sucker punched in the gut emotionally? Do you want to watch a line runner track that will reach deep inside you and nudge you gently towards healing? Then you gotta check this one out. Go watch it. Just fire off by John. It's like a glass. It's too much. You should watch this track. Boys and girls and non-binary pals, hold on to your seats because this is about to bow, 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 
Do you avoid thinking about rising sea levels and marine plastic pollution because those problems feel overwhelming? Check out Currents and Flotsam, a quiet little meditation by Banky, which imagines following the flow of water and touching our pollution. I love this track for the way it invites us to face our fears about the ecological trouble of our oceans in the Anthropocene under capitalism. If you enjoyed the salvage punk video game Sable, I think you'll like this track too. Boundaries is a track about not saying things. It's also about saying things. Ennen tonaalian katsomista minä suosittelen laittamaan videon asetukset korkeimmalle säädölle, minkä sinun laitteesi kestää ja tyhjentämään mielesi. Muuten riskinä on, että sinun mielesi sekä laitteesi räjähtävät tonaalian värikkäille maisemille, mieltä mullistavalle kameratyöskentelylle, erinomaisesti synkronoituihin liikkeisiin sekä rajoja rikkoviin visuaaleihin. Se on ihan vitun hyvä, käy katsomassa. Bravado by Panky is a relatable blend of performance art and music expression through scribbles guided by a clever application of LineWriter's live draw feature. Panky's brilliant execution and the lyrical personal touches throughout the piece send me into memories of being in class and scribbling to a tune stuck in my head. Sometimes I just sail away. When learning history in Western culture, we're often so aware of the people who existed and the words that were said, but not their emotional relevance to our own lives. Ava Hoffman, in her 38-minute video art documentary Animoya 2, made us actually care about line writer history for the first time by connecting a culturally bygone era to the present day in the most roundabout yet empathetic way imaginable. My judge's choice this year is Don't Worry by Branches. I think it's the first and only line writer track I'd classify as a lullaby. Lullabies assure safety and comfort while acknowledging a world full of danger and fearsome things. Written simply but filling your mind with vivid images, I am 26 years old. And when I watch this track, I feel like I am small again and my mother is singing me to sleep. As with last year, we decided not to include multiple tracks by the same creator in the top 10. This year, however, there were a large number of tracks in this category. The September Trilogy by Ava Hoffman, Don't Worry by Branches, Tenalia by Ava Hoffman, Bevabel Harvey, and Andrew Hess, and Animoya 2 by Ava Hoffman were already featured in the Judges' Choice category. The other eliminated tracks were... Ava Hoffman's I Want to Be Well, a hybrid of lyric video, music visualizer, and comic that is also a brutal dive into suicidality and mental illness. Branches Fly Around, a uniquely expressive multi-writer track that uses Bill Wirt's music to joyfully interrogate what it means to grow up. Gavin Roo 538's Give Em Hell slash Devil I Found Myself When, a triumphant two-part track that chronicles Gavin's complex relationship with faith in a character arc that is as bold as the piece's creative ideas, UTD's Let the Bodies Hit the Floor, a brutal off-sled mosh pit that taps into the raw, unfiltered glee of hearing someone scream out a song's vocals at the top of their lungs, and UTD and Infinity's Designated Male at Birth, a deeply plural conversation about the effects of living in oppressive systems and how we do or don't appreciate our own art as a result. Thanks so much for watching our picks for the top 10 line writer tracks of 2022. I say this every year, but I think this year was the best yet for line writer as an art form, yet again. Please go check out all of these tracks in the playlist in the description, and also check out our documentation of the judging process to see all the other tracks that were nominated. While you're there, feel free to buy us a coffee if you want to support us, and if you're interested in joining the Line Writer Artist Collective, there's an application form for that too. Thanks again for watching! And the number one track is Frosty the Blood Man, let's go!